Good morning, everyone. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every day this summer, my six-year-old son, Ezra, instead of sleeping in, would get up early so he could watch his favorite cartoon, Paw Patrol. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it's a pretty lame cartoon uh, about a bunch of little dogs that help people. Uh, what happened to the real cartoons, the real superheroes? I remember uh, when I was growing up, every Saturday morning, I couldn't wait to watch Super Friends. And uh, the Super Friends, all the superheroes at the Hall of Justice, as they would do battle against the Legion of Doom. Uh, even though every Saturday the plot line was pretty much the same, uh, some evil character from the Legion of Doom would hatch a plot about taking over the world. Super Friend would fly in. Super Friend would get trapped or they'd get locked in a room or something like that and things would look bleak. But then the Super Friend would use their superpowers or super brain power and good would win in the end. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Bad guy, devil, causes mayhem and destruction in the Garden of Eden. Jesus comes down from heaven to confront the devil. Jesus is beaten and killed. Things don't look good. Looks like evil will win. But of course, you and I know that Jesus rises from the dead and wins the victory for all, forever. Now, every Saturday morning, I got up and I was super excited to watch Super Friends, even though I knew, as I mentioned before, that the plot was pretty much going to be the same every, every Saturday. But yet a successful, familiar plot line makes for successful TV. The same is true of the familiar account of Jesus makes for the successful rescue of the world, of humankind, from the clutches of Satan. And so that's what we celebrate this morning. That's what we celebrate every morning in chapel, is Jesus winning the victory. That's what you celebrate every Sunday in church, is Jesus winning that familiar victory. Uh, at the time of Nahum the prophet, about 630 B.C., 630 years before Jesus, uh, the evil, the Legion of Doom, was the nation of Assyria. Uh, the nation of Assyria was the big bully. They were the ones who, they worshipped, they were unbelievers, they worshipped all these false gods. They were sexually immoral. They even sacrificed their children to their false gods. And they cruelly expanded their empire. They had taken captive the northern tribes of Israel, carried them away, and the northern tribes were never heard from again. And even though the southern tribes of Judah, God's people, had made deals with them, because unfortunately they didn't trust that the Lord could take care of them, they had made some deals with the Assyrians, uh, the Assyrians didn't care about that, and eventually they went down and they were going to defeat the southern tribes of Israel. They were knocking on the door. But you and I know that the Lord had a plan. The Lord was actually using the Assyrians to discipline his people. And then when he was done with them, this, the Assyrians were going to go the way of all the enemies of the Lord who arrogantly stand up against him. The Assyrians were going to be destroyed and they would pass into the pages of history. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? How often haven't we made deals with the devil because we don't trust that the Lord knows what he's talking about or we just can't quite bring ourselves to believe that the Lord will provide or that the Lord is honestly giving us good advice. Instead, we make deals with the devil. We actually listen to his lies and think that our opinions or our ideas matter, even though they fly in the face of God's word. 
And then that sinful world, we look to the sinful world to determine what's right and true, even though it clearly goes against God's will. And then we make deals with our sinful nature. We let our sinful natures control us. We don't say no to them. We don't put them down. And so our sinful nature gets us to hate, hold grudges, plot revenge, cheat, lie. We actually believe our sinful nature when it says, just keep lying, they'll never find out the truth. And little do we realize that all these things ultimately will lead to our destruction eternally. We need a superhero, don't we? And that superhero is Jesus. But again, just like those cartoons, it doesn't seem like Jesus is winning. Jesus comes and he's born in a filthy barn and he's laid down in a dirty feeding trough. He gives up full use of his divine power and he humbles himself and he is tortured and beaten and ridiculed and mocked. He eventually hands himself over to be crucified and sheds his blood. And all the while it appears like Jesus is losing. But yet we know that he's really winning. He's winning that battle against the evil forces of this world. And he's winning salvation for us forever. Nahum chapter 1 verse 15 said this, Look, there in the mountains, the feet of one who brings good news, who proclaims peace. Celebrate your festivals, O Judah, and fulfill your vows. No more will the wicked invade you. They will be completely destroyed. What good news as that messenger came to let the king of Judah and the people know that the Assyrians had been destroyed. That the people of Judah, that they were now free. Free to serve the Lord. Free to rededicate themselves to Him. Think about the messengers that come to you and to me. The messengers that stand on this stage May we look forward to and rejoice as those messengers bring us that good news. As they speak to us from this stage, as they speak to you from the pulpit at your church, may you look forward to and rejoice in that familiar message that you have been delivered. There's no need to fear. Satan, sin, death have been destroyed. You and I are free to serve the Lord, to rededicate our lives to Him, to honor Him with all that we do. I know it's a familiar account, that of Jesus winning the victory. But thankfully, it always ends the same, doesn't it? The good guy wins. May we always rejoice in that. We'll praise our Savior by singing our hymn, hymn 363.
We bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive us when we become bored or annoyed with the message of your saving work. You sacrificed everything, including your life, so that we could live forever in heaven with you. May that message never grow old. May we hold your rescue near and dear to our hearts. May it move each of us to honor you with every aspect of our lives so that others may know of your miraculous rescue work. And Lord, we also offer up a prayer of thanks for Eric Leonard, uh, FEO grad, who is uh, out of the hospital and has returned home. Lord, please uh, continue to bless his recovery and the therapy that he now must undergo. Uh, continue to be with him. And Lord, may he be heal quickly and be able to get back to school. In your name we always pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Before they show the